I will be talking about three prayers that will deepen our faith in God this year. So make sure you pay attention. At the end of our service, you must have those three kind of prayers that we are going to learn. In the Bible, just by a way of introduction, allow me to say, if you read the Bible from Old Testament all the way to the New Testament, we encounter the people the Bible calls the men and the women of faith. Maybe if you open your Bible in the book of Hebrews 11, there is a summary of the men and the women of faith. People who had a lot of trust and belief in the name of Jesus, Jehovah Elohim, the creator of heaven and earth. If you read, you will get people like Isaac in verse 20 of chapter 11, Hebrews. You will get people like Jacob in verse 21. You will get people like Joseph in verse 22. You will get people like Moses in verse 23. I know that projection may, can be taking place as we continue. You will get people uh, like Enoch. If you read your Bible, and quite a, a lot of people, Sarah is also mentioned there. And so many people, the Bible calls the women and the men of faith. But dear ones, I know from our Sunday school, we know one main person whom the Bible calls the man of faith. Who is that church? Oh, shout. Who is that? Abraham, the man of faith. But allow me to introduce to you another man of faith as indicated in Hebrews 11, 24. This is a man, no other than, but the man called Moses. The man called Moses. The Bible indicates that Moses is also a hero of faith. He's not a person who was wavered when it comes to trusting the Almighty. He knew when it comes to the matter of God, he would remain alone, but the other people could move away. And so, he is a man of faith also. So what did Moses do? Moses had a responsibility in Egypt. Remember, 40 years in Egypt. And yet was in, when he was in Egypt, he continued to believe in God. In bondage, he trusted God. I know some of us may be in bondage this morning. It may be a sin bondage. It may be a challenge that you're going through. We are looking for jobs. Such a time when the economy is not conducive. When people are dying, we have just said there is one of us who has died. And so many challenges. We may be facing turbulences and challenges. And yet the Bible says, Moses did not waver in his faith. What did he do again? Remember, he is also given an obligation to get the children of Israel out of bondage. That is a big responsibility. God tells him, let my people go. And Moses is wondering, what will happen? What will happen? I have my shortcomings. I am a stammerer. Will these people listen to me? But he says, fine. Because I believe in my God. Let's go. He tells God, I am here. Please, let me take your children out of bondage. Dear ones, turn to me as I open our text today in Exodus 33, 11. Exodus 33, 11. 
our media person you can help us Exodus 33 11 are we there oh you're still in Hebrews fine let me continue now there is a recap that I want to give in Exodus 33 Moses has already taken an obligation of leading the children of Israel but in which at the time they become stubborn they are not listening to Moses Moses is struggling and it reaches a time it's like he wants to give up and God tells him when you read from verse 1 that Moses you see these people I'm about to consume them why? because they are still next people when I give them instructions they don't follow when I tell, when I send you to them to tell them to do every city, they don't follow. But what did Moses decide to do? Moses decides to create an atmosphere. He creates what the Bible calls the tent of meeting, a meeting place where he can meet with God. And in that meeting place, he begins to have a conversation with God. You see, when things are tough, that's why we come to church. When things are tough, that's why you need to create a tabernacle in your house. A place we call an altar where you can talk to your God. Your marriage is on the rock. Create a tabernacle. Moses decides to create a tabernacle. So that he may have a conversation. In Isaiah 1 8, the Bible says, Come, let us reason together. Every time we go to God and we begin to reason with Him, He will be able to listen to us. So, this is what Moses does He creates an atmosphere, the tabernacle. And the Bible says, there, when, After he created the tabernacle, there was a cloud that came down. And Moses opened his heart. To God and he mentioned three prayers that I want us to learn today so let's read the three prayers let me begin from 13 Moses says now therefore oh God remember he's in the tent with God the two of them the children of Israel outside he begins to talk to God now you see how powerful prayer is now therefore I pray if I have found grace in your sight show me your ways that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Prayer number one that Moses is praying and I pray this will also be your prayer this year God teach me your ways I have been a teacher for the last 11 years. Dear ones, allow me to tell you that the students who don't have what we call a teachable spirit are dangerous students. They keep on idling in class and outside class. They are lazy. Some of them have reasons why they are not learning. Some of them have attitudes to their parents and even their guardians and teachers. So when a teacher stands and introduces a subject or a topic, they switch off. physics. physics, young people. Moses understood. That if you want to score an A, the prayer number one should be, I want you to teach me. Moses has understood there is a teacher when I look in and I'm able to learn what the teacher tells me, success automatically comes. Moses is saying, this marriage, I will not be able to move on unless you show me how marriage operates. Moses is saying, you see this business, I began it last year. This business may not move on. Go show me how businesses are done. Moses is saying, this church of cathedral cannot be able to progress until you show her. 
culture are we used to? Which culture? It may be an African culture. When we talk about God, you say we have so many gods that we can worship. It may be what we call modernism and post-modernism culture. This is the kind of culture that is eating our generation today. That you can dress anything and you tell people, me, Mr. Pangwingwe, if you are a child of God, Mpaka Upangwe, Oh, my dress, my choice. Listen, dear ones, when I come out of my house, my dress is no longer my choice. My dress is God's choice. If you are a child of God, if you are a young person, if you want God to teach you his culture, you must say, let them look naked. I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am a peculiar person. I am the light of the world. When I walk, people must know. I belong to Christ. Which culture are we moving in, dear ones? Which culture? Which culture? Some of us, we are born in cultures where you are forgiving, especially if you are a man. Oh, you cannot forgive anybody. Wewe unajua wanaume kweli. Wanaume hivi ndio tunaendanga. Ah, usicheze na mimi. Nitakugonga nikulipe. Nita, we, usicheza na mimi. Hey. So even forgiving women becomes a challenge. Forgiving our children becomes a challenge. Forgiving even a man of God who has wronged you becomes a challenge. But if you are a child of God, in John 1, 12, the Bible says that them that have received me, I have given them the power to be my children. If you are a child of God, then you tell God, teach me, teach me. The way you forgive people their sin. On the cross you said, it is finished. Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. One prayer. Teach me your ways. This year, teach me your ways, O oh God. I am willing to go with you. The way you do things, I am willing to copy. You are my role model, God. I want to go with you. Hallelujah. There is a man in the Bible called David. If you read many of his book, many of the chapters and verses, like in Psalm 86, 11, maybe you can just write it down. Psalms 86, 11. Another one, Psalms 25, 4. I've just taken a few. But if you read it in Samuel 13 14 and in Acts 13 
22 very important books there first samuel 13 14 and acts 13 22 the bible calls david a man after my own heart now let me give you a secret here one why did god say david is a man after my own heart listen david was not righteous he used to fall remember I, David was a sinner, but yet God says, I have found a man after my own heart. The secret is, if you read those chapters I've given you and others every time, David is saying, God, teach me your law. God, teach me your precepts. God, teach me your word. God, teach me your principles. Every time, oh, Jamaku Kitanda Dabi, Gunamia, Gunamia. God, teach me your ways. This was the secret of David. Prayer number two. We continue from verse 13. Media people, you can move up. Verse 13 now. So, prayer number one, God. Teach me your ways. Let's move on. The man who did Hebrews, Nilqua Exodus. Let's move on. In 14. And Moses said, and, and God said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Remember, after he has told God, teach me your ways, now God is telling me, is telling him, my presence will go with you. Listen 15. In 15 he says, then he said to him, this is Moses now, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up here. Prayer number two, of Moses, God guarantee me your presence. God guarantee me your presence. Allow me to define what the presence of God is, the presence of God is a divine atmosphere that is created by the humanity so that they can meet the divinity. What is that an atmosphere or the presence of God? The presence of God is a divine atmosphere created by the humanity to be able to interact with the divinity. Hallelujah. And so he tells God, now as you teach me your word, as you teach me your ways, there is something I am longing to move further. I want you to assure me of your presence, your dwelling place. What is the presence of God? It is a place of honor where God dwells. In this place, it may be in your room, it may be on the road, it may be in the church. So long as you create the atmosphere, the presence of God will come. The Bible calls it Shekinah, Shekinah presence. So we have the Shekinah glory and we have the presence of God. I'm hoping at the end we'll be able to get that. Listen, dear ones, this is an important point. You can write it down. Our God is omnipresent, but his presence is not everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Our God is omnipresent. Meaning he's everywhere, but his presence is not everywhere. Can I just write? When you go to the bar, God is there, but his presence is not there. When you go to go in at night, where you people are going to be out again, God is there, he's watching what is taking place, but his presence 
In the presence of God, we have miracles and wonders. And number three, we have what we call spiritual illumination. Are we moving on well, church? That is prayer number? Number two. Prayer number one, can we shout it, number one? God. Verse 13. Number two, God. Oh, speak like you're hearing me, dear ones. God, guarantee me your presence. Verse 14 and 15. I'm moving to the last prayer. Then we pray together. This should be your prayer this year. <clears throat> Let's continue. Hoping your best. We are in 15, okay? Let's continue. The Bible says, then Moses said to King, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Let's move on. Next. Yeah. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people and this go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the others? We move on.
in his presence, that is his glory. When he begins to visit your marriage, in his presence, that is his glory. So Moses says, show me your glory, O Lord. Hallelujah. If that is your prayer, can you repeat with me? Show me your glory, O Lord. Now, you will move on and read. Because this is a very good movie from up there. But you will realize, God begins now to show himself to Moses. Ananda to kupita mele yake tu, na Moses akiona. Ananda kutenda, vitu wabavyo hadithu ze kanyakuwari. The glory was there with Moses. Hallelujah. When people love one another, as the Bible says, that is the glory of God. So the glory of God is not something complicated. When people begin to worship him as Elisha die, Elisha die means he's mighty. Then that is his glory. When people begin to acknowledge him as Abba Father, the source, the sustainer, and the one who holds our life, he becomes evident in us. He's working in us. Hallelujah. And so, allow me to finish by saying this. In the Old Testament, the glory of God used to come down in form of a cloud or even wind. It inspires them to accomplish a certain task. Then after that, the cloud would go. Like we are experiencing with Moses here. But today, I want us to know we have the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says that our bodies in Romans 12, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So what we need to do is just to create the atmosphere and things begin to happen. God has not visited your marriage because you haven't created an atmosphere. God has not visited your finances Maybe because you have not created an atmosphere. God has not visited your academics. Maybe because we have not created an atmosphere. Because he's in us. He's waiting for us to create an atmosphere. When we create an atmosphere, he begins to show up. His glory begins to come down. His glory begins to come down. His glory begins to come down. Hallelujah. The three prayers of Moses. God, teach me your ways. Number two, God, guarantee me your presence. Then number three, God, show me your glory. Have we learned something today? Can we put up our hands as we pray? Father, this is our portion this year. This is our prayer this year, oh God. Teach us your ways. Teach us your ways. We have tried to move using our own acumen, our own abilities, our own intelligence, oh God, but we have been unable to move on. Now see our hands as we surrender to you. May you teach us your precepts, teach us your principles, the principles of the kingdom of God. As we leave this place, my Father, may we never remain the same. We will be able to create the atmosphere where the Bible says in Psalms 19, it is called the dwelling place, the secret place of the living God. And we pray that as we create the atmosphere, your presence will be evident. Receive all the praise of God. For this we pray in Jesus' name.